A suspicious fire destroyed one of the main buildings of the Highlander Center in late March, an almost century-old civil rights school in Tennessee that once housed the likes of Rosa Parks and Dr. King. We featured Highlander's newest co-directors on The Laura Flanders Show just days after the midterms. What has happened since, and what do we need to know about the white power symbol that was found spray-painted on the premises at Highlander? Highlander's co-executive directors are back. Ashley Woodard Henderson and Reverend Alan Maxfield Steele are joining us via Skype from Highlander. First off, I want to say we're all just so sorry that you've had to go through what you've been going through. And, and I hate to sort of um, start with what happened. So let's start with where you are now. Like, like how are you doing right now, both of you? Uh, Ash, start. Yeah, I mean, it's been a roller coaster. Um, of emotions, I think both very deep grief because this sacred space has been violated, inspired, um, but also like a lot of joy and a lot of love and a lot of like camaraderie because we have gotten messages in language that I can't read or speak um, from Japan, from the Philippines, from Palestine to Kenya, South Africa, every Central Appalachian state, all of the South, and almost every state in the United States has sent some love and solidarity with us. So. I think there's been moments of great joy, and I think we've been reminded of the resilience of this place and our people. Hmm. Uh, I, think, I think we feel that like, this is not the first storm that our institution or our people have weathered uh, by any means in our almost century of existence. Um, so it's not only true for our communities, but it's also very true for this particular institution. So t now, take us back a little bit. Um, Alan, take us to that morning. It was a Friday morning. Um, what happened? Well, what we learned when we woke up uh, that early that morning was that uh, we were hearing reports of the office being ablaze, engulfed in flames, was some of the language that some of our staff were calling us, telling us about. So folks got together as quickly as possible back on the hill. And by the time that we got there, uh, the blaze was down, but the building was also down to the ground. Um, and then we saw uh, that morning a white power symbol spray painted on the parking lot. Now, tell us a bit about that building. It was a fairly new building. What, what happened in there? And, and what do we know so far about the investigation? Mm -hmm. So new is relative. <laughs> um, so in our almost 87 years, it is one of the newer buildings um, on, our, on our property. And we've been here since about the 70s. Um, and so this building was our main office. It was uh, I've, I've seen people describe it, and it's not untrue, that it's kind of the nerve center of, of our staffing. Um, it's where, you know, people built their altars and their offices. It's where I had pictures uh, from, you know, the kids from our children's camp had drawn. It's, it's where we had people's baby pictures and thank you cards. Um, all sorts of stuff was in that office. Uh, we did have an archive room in that, in that building. Uh, but it was by no means all of our archives. Um, so we did, the, the press has said a lot that we lost the archives, that's not true. Um, we've also heard a lot about like, why didn't those hillbillies digitize everything? Well, that requires resources that people don't tend to give to people in the South. Um, and so we've been working with outfits all over the country to make sure that our papers are, are safe and, and archived and are in the process of being digitized. And to be honest, because we haven't, been fully cleared to be able to salvage anything from the, what's left of the building. Um, but once we're cleared to be able to, to go in and sort of dig through the rubble, we don't even know what we might be able to salvage because we don't think that everything's been lost. So um, we're just waiting for this ongoing investigation to sort of wrap up and for us to be able to get folks that are historians and archivists and anthropologists, et cetera, to come and support us as we try to see what we can get out of that building. So do so talk about that uh, um, investigation. As you pointed out, Alan, this building burnt to the ground. Um, anything suspicious about that? Well, the investigation is ongoing. So there's, uh, we know as much as we know, which is that it's ongoing currently. Uh, the most suspicious thing, obviously, was the symbol that we saw spray painted on the ground uh, that seems to mimic a white power symbol uh, that can Google and look up. It's one of those things that's out there. Uh, but that's as much as we know right now. But we also know that that symbol wasn't in our parking lot Thursday before the fire. Sorry. Um, we didn't see it until the building was on fire. And that's what makes it suspicious, right? Um, it's also, you know, I think the, the Knox News Sentinel uh, put out a whole article about what they think the symbol is and how they think it's connected to the white power movement. It's actually not. Uh, something new. It's just that I think more people are starting to notice 
um, and be paying attention to the fact that like Nazis are marching in Knoxville or burning books in Western North Carolina or shooting up you know, faith spaces, um, et cetera, not only here in the South or in Appalachia, but across the U.S. So we are very, very, very closely monitoring this investigation. Let's take a quick glimpse of some of the history of Highlander. Uh, this is from a, a film made by one of the early participants. Well, between 1960 and 1965, uh, Guy would organize a series of workshops with Highlanders backing to share the repertoire that was growing in the freedom movement. The first one that I got to go to was in 1960. A lot of these young people didn't know it in 1960, but they'd be working for the next 30 or 40 years to bring about a change in this segregated society. Here's your mother. The most primary reason to bring people together was so that people could learn each other's songs and everybody could go home with lots of songs. And it was a way to share around the South a lot of the music. I mean, that just speaks to the longevity. And I want to get back to a sense of outrage about the, the fire. But before we go back there, tell us a bit about the work that you've been doing, you know, up to and including the weekend of the fire and ever since. Um, and the message that I've heard from both of you very strongly over the last few weeks, which is the big news is we're here and we're going strong. I mean, whether it was work to, to nurture a budding labor movement, or the work that Guy talks about and Candy talk about in terms of their particular experiences with the, the Black liberation movement that sometimes gets whittled down to the tactic of fighting for civil rights. Um, there's so many different front lines of struggle that Highlander has been connected to over the, the first part, the 20th century work of the institution. And then to talk about what we're doing now is, is one of my greatest joys, um, one of our greatest joys. Um, that we are, you know, involved in helping lead with so many amazing other comrades. The Movement for Black Lives in the 21st century um, is some of the, the most important work I've ever known. And just a little uh, pin on it, I mean, you were, you were doing it that weekend. The morning of the fire, we were getting ready for about 55 to 60 people to come to the hill, we call it the hill, um, here at Highlander, uh, to have a Central Appalachian People's Movement Assembly on prison justice um, for people to literally bring the voices of incarcerated people onto our hill. Um, and we had a decision to make. Our office was literally still smoking. Uh, were we going to cancel this event? We all agreed that like exactly what these folks, if it comes to be that our office was burned down by neo-Nazis, um, that that's exactly what they would want is for us to stop doing our work. They would want us to be so scared that we wouldn't continue the legacy and the work building of, of transforming our communities for the better. And so we decided that we would take our safety very seriously. We would give people the option uh, about whether or not they wanted to still come, but that we would still hold space. And we did. And everyone still showed up. Like not one program has been canceled because of this fire. Um, and it won't be. Uh, we intend to continue the work of, of Highlander Center because movement of company and support work now more than ever in my lifetime is critically important. To, uh, not only saving the planet, but saving the people on it too. So I want to end with a bit of a question about the context in which this is all happening. Um, you know, in the immediate uh, wake of your fire, we saw four Louisiana black churches um, set alight. And then, I mean, as I'm talking to you this, uh, talking to you now, I have in front of me the New York Times coverage of the horrendous Notre Dame blaze in, in Paris, which has literally, I think, like, two double spreads on, on what happened. I mean, an important historic artifact for sure, going back um, centuries, but a little bitty story about what happened in Louisiana. Um, how do you think about this kind of compare and contrast and, and, and how do we carry the knowledge that you guys are still up against what you're up against in your institution and this work, and it still has a hard time kind of surfacing in our, in our consciousness? One thing that we understand this moment to be is uh, an attack on sacred spaces. Um, here in the South, here in Central Appalachia, uh, this is not a new phenomenon. Uh, we know that folks who are associated with white power and neo confederate struggles are very interested in attacking and trying to undermine the spiritual uh, and sacred places that, whether you're a person of faith or whether you're a person who uh, finds sacredness in coming together to talk about liberation, uh, we know that these places, whether it's here at Highlander, whether it's the, the churches in Louisiana. The mosque in Jerusalem. The mosque in Jerusalem that is not getting a lot of the same coverage uh, as, as Notre Dame. Um, is, are, these, are, these are all places that we have to protect. 
uh, and then we have to think about protection as not only being the physical infrastructure that needs to be built or rebuilt, uh, but also holding sacred what is people's places where they can gather, find meaning, uh, share stories, share food, share music with each other. We're one of those places. We send out our love and our camaraderie to our, our, our fam down in Louisiana who are engaging and rebuilding as well. I mean, one of the things I take away from the mass reacting to the, to the burning of Notre Dame is, wow, our culture does know how to mourn and grieve. Um, you have the advantage where your institution doesn't even represent the upholding of supremacy and patriarchy and misogyny and, and all the rest. And we're at least trying not to. Uh, and it's a every every minute of every day kind of commitment to to building a new world. Um, you know, I think that that this is a sacred space. Um, that even if you don't believe in some divine power, that if you've ever chanted, "I believe that we will win," or "Ain't no power like the power of the people," because the power of the people don't stop. That is a declaration of faith. Um, and people come to this hill and have been coming to this hill since the 70s. Have been coming to Highlander since the 30s. Um, because they had that belief that if we could come together, if we could learn together, if we could share each other's stories and skills, uh, then we could build, we could go back home, we could do the work to build the world that we've always deserved where everyone has what they need so that harm doesn't exist anymore. Can people send you money and, and help at this point to help with the rebuilding or the investigation, Alan? We're very happy to receive people's support as we enter into a phase of recovery. Um, so yes, uh, our website, you can go to the donate tab on our website and the general support button that you can, that will already be pushed and you just make sure that that's pushed. Uh, we accept all of those uh, offers and we're grateful for them. We also receive checks so folks can mail it to our mailing address. We're still receiving mail, still, still, mail. <laughs> still opening it and sometimes it's bills. So, you know, we got to pay those too. So we're mailing it out too. Um, but yeah, grateful for folks' support. Um, and we're also working very steadily to build infrastructure to where we can, in turn, support other uh, folks in the South who are in need of uh, infrastructure in this particular moment and beyond. Thank you both so much for being with us. Sure. We'll continue this ongoing communication stream uh, going forward. It's a pleasure to talk with you and keep up the great work. Thank, Thank you, Laura. Thanks. Thank you.